I'm gonna take a guess. One of two things will be the reason why I clicked on this video. Either you got a new camera or a new phone with a really nice camera, or you've already had something to make videos with and you want to make them look cooler. Now what? Oi, what's up, it's Nicholas, also known as Sentient Poison, also known as your favorite anime vampire. Today, we're gonna take a simple shot and level it up from 0 to 100. By the end of this video, you should have a couple good ideas on how to make your shots look better. And if not, uh, I don't know how to help you, mate. Sorry. But before we even get to the shots, first, make sure to like and subscribe. And also remember this. One thing that will immediately elevate your shots is to always, always, Always color grade your footage. If not, at least color correct it. More times than not, your raw footage straight out of camera can always be improved by even just a couple simple tweaks in post. I'll be showing the shots both before and after we apply the color grade. These are the techniques that I actually use every single time I make one of these videos, so best believe that it works. So let's get to shooting. Starting at zero. Level zero. This is what I like to call beginner's oopsies. Description that I put for this. Basic. Noob. Absolutely no thought put into it. This is literally just you grabbing your camera and pointing it at you. Absolutely no thought put into the lighting, into the positioning of the camera, the angle, the background, the foreground, nothing. And this can lead to a considerable amount of problems to ruin your shot. Even though most of us have the luxury of having a window in our room, some people don't even bother to open the bloody window and uh, this is what we end up with. I mean, I'm honestly concerned how I'm going to be able to work with this footage and color grade it because this is so painfully dim. And not only that, it, it, there's nothing to- it's so boring. <laughs> awful. Awful footage to look at. Even more awful to work with. Let's stop talking about this and move on to the next level already. So, after zero, we have number one. Level status. I gave up numbering after zero. This is what I call fix your lighting. We're free. Description for this, better, easy, all reliable, window light, baby. I pointed at my window as if there's actually a window light right now. It is 2 a.m., by the way. Anyway, all the shots that we're gonna do, we're only gonna do with natural lighting. We're only gonna work with the sun. I want you to know that you can pull off these shots without any augmentation from artificial lighting. This is literally the simplest and oldest lighting trick in the book. You got no money for lights? All right, sunlight, baby, easy. The changes that you'll notice, the background will change, obviously, because you changed the position of the camera. Your lighting will be way better on the subject, and depending on the time of day, you might get stronger or weaker light, harsher or softer light, but usually when sunlight passes through A, clouds, B, your roof, and then C, through your window, through the shutters or the curtains that you have, it's usually going to be pretty well diffused. With both curtains and shutters mentioned, you can use those to control the amount of light that you actually let in. It really just depends on when you shoot and how you shoot it. So work with what you've got, get creative. If you're having a good time watching me and this channel, then I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and clicked that notification bell because as little of a thing as it is, it really does make a big difference. Anyway, back to the video. All right, let's level up again. Number two, level status, creativity unlocked. A couple of easy ways to get creative with your light by repositioning your subject around the light that's coming through the window. Side lighting, which is literally what it sounds like. Position your subject to where the light is hitting stronger on one side than the other. This creates a really different dynamic compared to how we were doing it earlier, where the sunlight was directly hitting the subject evenly. If you want something a little bit more dramatic, you can place your subject in a way where the light is hitting this way and it's creating contrast where this side is really bright, this side gets a little darker, that light kind of fades off. And another option that you can do depending on what you're trying to do is edge lighting. So edge lighting is essentially using your light, aka the sun, to outline your subject. So imagine there's a light that's lighting up my shoulder, my neck, the edge of my hair, that is literally what edge lighting is. Try to position your subject to find a way that the light is going to hit the edges in a way that emphasizes the edges. For this example that I have, it's kind of doing two things at once. It's creating a silhouette type image, but also creating the edge lit lighting style. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. Just like when I expose differently with the same shot right here, 
where you can see my face pretty evenly lit by just the reflection of the light from bouncing off the floor to my face and exposing my camera a little bit higher, but if you look at my shoulders, my neck, my hair, it's still creating a decent amount of edge lighting. Next up is shaping your light, aka letting light pass through something else before it hits whatever subject you're shooting. That could be anything from leaves, blinds, curtains, whatever else, and essentially just allowing the light to pass through those objects first so that they create pockets of light and shadows on your subject. It's a way to create a little bit more visual interest and literally you are shaping your light with objects. This is a way to control your light even though your light is literally just the sun. It looks fancy and creative and cinematic, but it doesn't have to be complicated for it to look that way. And then lastly, the ever so classic silhouette. Need I say more? I mean, look at this shot, dude. Like, I had no prep shooting this. I set up the camera, I exposed for the window, put myself in shadow, and just stood there. And this is what it ended up looking like. And just think about this. You can do this anytime, anywhere, as long as you've got sunlight and you can silhouette your subject. It's classic, it's easy, people do it all the time, but it's so beautiful, you can't blame them for doing it. If you just want a shot that looks good, do a silhouette, it's probably the easiest one here. <laughs> Alright, level up three. Level status, actually making choices. This is baby's first camera angles. It takes less than 10 seconds to look less like a noob. Consider your camera angle. Go high, go low, go eye level. This completely changes your association between the subject and the setting. All right, so I want you to observe the difference between how you feel about this shot coming up from a high angle looking down at me versus when we move it down to my eye level, so we're just looking eye to eye at this point, versus how it feels when I'm looking down at you and you're looking up at me from a low angle. It changes the emotional association your audience has. Are they looking up at your subject from a low angle? Because that emphasizes their size, their power. The audience is literally looking up. Are they looking down from a high angle? Maybe the audience is an observer. Maybe they're sharing the subject's same high point of view, looking down at everything else. Or maybe the subject is down and they're not powerful. And and the audience is literally looking down at them from a high angle. Are they more the eye level of the subject? In that case, maybe the audience is literally seeing their subject eye to eye. And sometimes the meaning doesn't even have to be that deep. It, it doesn't even have to have meaning at all sometimes. Sometimes a stylistic choice just looks good. Or sometimes it's practical because that's literally the only angle that you could get. Maybe that's the only place that you could place your camera at the time. Sometimes the shot just looks good from a certain angle. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. If you needed somebody to give you permission, you have mine. Regardless though, take the 10 seconds to see if a change is worth making. Level up four, level status spiced up frames. Get creative with your frame. For the sake of simplicity for this video, we are sticking with a medium close-up shot size and a center frame for the subject. But I hope, so far, I've proven to you that that doesn't mean you're restricted in any other way at all. And a good couple of ways to think about getting creative with your frame is looking at your foreground, your background, and trying to do frame within a frame. Foreground elements are literally things that are in front of your shot before your subject and way before your background. It creates an extra level of depth where you see an object near your camera to focus on your subject, as opposed to this, where you're also evaluating the rest of the background. So at the risk of looking like a proper alcoholic, you can see how foreground elements can contribute a lot to a shot. So if we actually break this down we've got my clock here, a fountain, my mask, wine glass, wine bottle, and another wine bottle. All layered and all leading up to me at the center. All these things not only create depth but they also draw your eyes to the subject a lot more. If I remove these one by one you'll see that the background and your whole shot essentially changes completely. This is where I actually place these things, so I'm not going to move them, but you can see how different this shot looks. It's up to you if you think that this shot is either better or worse. I think it's worse, but if you like it, then there you go. That proves the point that you do have this choice of whether or not you want foreground elements in your shot, and whether or not foreground elements being in your shot will make it better or worse for what you're trying to do and what you like. Now, with a background, you gotta think about the mess that's behind you. Nobody knows what your scene actually looks like in real life. I could be an absolute slob off camera, but this still looks clean because this is the only part that you're seeing. This is the only part that matters. Like I could have an absolute dumpster fire 
on my left and you wouldn't even know, right? So, not that I do, but my point is, use this as a new mental frame that what you're seeing in camera, that's your playground. What they don't see, doesn't matter. So if you're shooting a scene in a space that you like, but there are things in that space that's making the shot a little bit worse, just set them off to the side. Remove them, put them off frame. It's as simple as that. And if you do have a messy space, maybe it's time to clean up. Maybe take the sign to just, you know, make sure you have a tidier space and be an actual responsible functioning adult. That's just me though. Uh <laughs> As for frames within a frame, you're using objects in your scene to naturally frame your character or your subject within the shot that already exists. So as an example, you can shoot through doorways and windows. So this is your frame, and you're creating another one within it. Alright, level up number five, level status, color basics, baby. Once you port over your footage to whatever editing software that you use, I use DaVinci Resolve, you can make certain basic adjustments to make your image just up a little more. For color, you've got white balance, tint, saturation. For your exposure, you've got exposure, contrast, highlights, whites, shadows, blacks. And if you're feeling a bit brave, tone curves. All these basic adjustments will help you add a little bit more pop, a little bit more style to your image without going too in too deep into color grading. You're literally just making your image look correct. But if you want to look a little bit more stylistic, even with these simple basic global adjustments, you can already do a lot. But that being said, if you want to add a little bit more sauce, we gotta level up again. Number six, level status better than an Instagram filter. As a beginner, you don't need to concern yourself with all the complications of color grading. What you can do is grab a LUT or a lookup table, which is essentially functioning like a video filter. There are a bunch out there, people sell theirs, you can download some stuff for free. You just chuck in the LUT, you adjust the percentage of how strong or how weak you want it to be, and then make your own manual adjustments to make it look right. That is a completely valid process, I know some people disapprove of it because it doesn't teach people how to actually color grade, but as a beginner, it is something that makes it easier for you to jump the hurdle of going from basic color correction to something that looks more stylistic. What I would actually advise is you do that for a while, but also try to actually learn how to do it manually. Watch movies, watch shows, try to copy the color grades that they have. I create my own LUTs for me, so I manually color grade, save them as LUTs, import them when I'm editing my new footage, and then make adjustments backwards so that I can accommodate the actual footage that I'm chucking in my color grade. Here's the last phase that I have for you today. Number seven, level status, aggressively extra. So aside from a heavy ass color grade and all the effort that I put into getting my shots right, I put in extra effects to make it look more cinematic and more stylistic for my liking. The effects that I typically use include crop, grain, halation, glow, lens distortions, lens reflections, and transform. I don't use all of them for every single shot, but you can count on seeing a crop, glow, grain, and halation in pretty much all of the shots that I have. With all these effects added on top of each other, I end up creating an image that improves what I already had to begin with. And sometimes you have to be careful with the amount of effects that you add. Because I've fallen into this trap many, many times, and I still do, where I add way too many effects than I actually need when the shot itself was already good just being left alone with something as simple as a color grade. It didn't need more. So just like everything else that I brought up, it's really up to your discretion, and that's something that I can't teach you. That's something that you need to learn yourself by virtue of doing. I hope this pushes you to actually start recording because none of these tips are gonna help you if you don't actually just start filming and figure out what you can do in editing and color grading. Get started now, use these techniques, refer back to this video, share it to anybody that might be able to use it. If you like my videos, leave a like, subscribe. My name's Nicholas. You're welcome for these tips, but also thank you for watching. Have fun making videos out there. Good luck, cheers.